good to go? <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Strategy Planning and Partnerships Committee, Tuesday, 19th of January. The Strategy Planning and Partnerships Committee and the Infrastructure and Public Space Committee public meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any or all contribution you make to the meeting may be, may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transferring to outside Australia. The Strategy Planning and Partnerships Committee acknowledges that we are meeting in the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to Elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. Uh, I have uh, an apologies from Councillor Clarahan and Councillor Slammer. And I don't believe there are any other any other apologies. Is she an apology or no, running late? No, or? late. Right, so that's not an apology then. Um, may I have a confirmation of minutes from the 8th of December? Deputy Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor, uh, seconded. Can I put that? All those in favour? You're still right on them, apparently. You, you are required to vote on a Thank you. Assuming you've read them. And uh, declare that carried. Uh, members, we have no public forum tonight. Uh, verbal report, just a really big welcome back. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, and Council of Assurances, this is your first committee meeting, is that correct? Correct. So welcome to the team. And I uh, hope everyone had really nice holidays. And uh, sad to tell you, it's over now. We're back. Was there a holiday? Members, item number six um, is the appointment of a deputy chair for this um, committee. Uh, so it was previously it was Councillor Sims for, before he um, went to the Senate. Um, so I'll call for nominations from the floor. Deputy Lord Mayor, are you still deputy? I Mayor? nominate Councillor Dershaw. Councillor Dershaw, you accept to be deputy chair? You've got a really good chair. If you do accept, <laughs> you know, that is. <laughs> Yes, I'll accept them. <laughs> on that basis. Right. That basis. Good sales pitch, I think. Yeah, very good. Um, do I have any other nominations? That will be that. Congratulations, Deputy Chair, Councillor Shaw. Oh, can I put up, uh, can someone move that, please, for me? Happy to move. Councillor Corell, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'll put that. All those in favour? <coughs> Declare that carried. Thank you. Members, I'll now call for items for adoption on block. Um, item number eight. Is that one here? Yep. That was you, Councillor Hender. Mm -hmm. Item number nine, Councillor Wilkinson. Item number ten, there. And then we've got. Uh, all right, well, that's all of them. Good. No, no items for adoption on block. We'll go straight to agenda item number eight, Councillor Hender. And you've circulated. Yeah, so I'd like to move an, an amendment. A motion right. that's a slight variation on the printed version. So that's on the, on the screen. No, yeah, well, also, oh, it's on mine. Well, let me go back. Where's the uh, standby? <laughs> Do you want me just to shout it out? Have you, have you got the amendment? Make it circulate. Um, Megan, they're just pulling it up. Okay, so, so can you just start talking? Okay, so um, really the the um, intent of it is simply to say that. 
that we write to and otherwise advocate to parliamentarians, councils and key stakeholders in the terms of the documents as attachment C and D, but not actually just by sending them C and by sending them attachments C and D. Really just to say that the content of those documents is adequate, but I think as, um, as advocacy documents, there's some work to be done. Now, it may well be that that was always the intent, but I just wanted to make that explicit. Thank you. I'm just going to call for a seconder when we get the words up. But has anyone read them? On the, okay, so, Deputy Lord Mayor. Megan, I think you can talk to it. I think. Well, I, feel, I really have spoken to it. That's yeah. all I really wanted to say. I don't think it's it's uh, controversial. It's really simply to say, yes, we do want to do some advocacy on this. Yes, we do want to do the advocacy in terms of the attachments C and D. Um, but we need, if we're going to start to write to people, we're going to need to prepare documents that well and truly state our case for us. And uh, there's some real work that needs to be done to make those documents reader friendly. Thank you. Um, just on picking up that point, I'll come back to you, Councilor Martin. Um, because this is um, the administration of going to um, action this um, correspondence, can, do you want to make a comment at all, David? Uh, through the Chair, look, I, I think that, that makes it absolutely uh, clear as far as the intent of administration taking um, that key decision from Council away to really then shape up to be just that advocacy type document um, to all of those parties. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor Seconder, did you wish to speak? Councillor Martin? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, look, I, a question uh, and then a couple of observations. Um, the first one is, can you speak further to um, uh, item 22 in relation to the parklands? Um, can you just explain further to me the significance of the missing um, uh, accompaniment to the, uh, the change that's occurred? The, the uh, through the chair, um, currently the various um, pieces of legislation provide certain um, protection to the parklands. The current wording, uh, we believe, of the bill means that those current protections will be lessened or even eliminated. As such, we believe it is important to ensure that mm -hmm. uh, all, all members um, are aware of that and that uh, given the importance of the parklands and Council's position in relation to the parklands, that that be expressed as clearly as possible to um, parliamentarians and other stakeholders. Uh, okay, but what, what specifically, I, I've read the documents, what specifically is needed to give teeth to what's already proposed in terms of the amendment? Um, through, through the Chair, in attachments C and D, and I can try and jumped to that, there is a table that describes the, the various commentary that we would utilise um, in response to that. We have sought legal advice in regards um, to that to best form the words that would be required. Um, if we, we're just trying to find, find that at the moment, otherwise we can uh, potentially take that offline in between hand and provide greater clarity. Yeah, I, it's just that it's, it's hard to follow. Uh, I couldn't quite understand what was required to give teeth to the amendment that's already been made. So, yes, that would be really helpful. Actually, I've just been indicated that uh, Mr Hutchins has the information at hand at the moment. So, we get through the chair. Page 37 of attachment D does provide some more detail in relation to the amendments. Put. Page 37. 37 in attachment D, which, which does reiterate, as Mr. Chip um, outlined, that the, the question is around the, I guess, the reinstatement or the continuation <coughs> of the existing you know, leg, legislative triggers in the parklands when it relates to development applications. Okay, yeah, I did read that. Um, okay, uh, as that's, that's the bit that I was wondering about. It's the wording that I was interested in. What, what is it that the, the legislation needs to say? In simple terms, at, at present within the parklands, the Crown Development Powers, so Section 49, which is where in some ways applications are taken out of the normal processes, as well as the major project um, pathways in, in the Development Act, aren't able to be used within the other parklands. So the position in here is that those so those powers or powers to the same effect should be transferred across to the new new legislation. 
as it's currently drafted and before Parliament, there's there's not like processes or exemptions or triggers in place. And that's the consequence of the Parnell Amendment? Yeah, so the Parnell Amendment gives recognition to the parklands and provides a, a link between the development legislation and the parklands act, but it doesn't go the f I guess on our reading doesn't go the full way to continue the existing uh, provisions. And is um, uh, uh, Mark Parnell amenable to extending the amendment? Have we had that discussion? Uh, I don't believe we've had that discussion. Okay, so that would be part of the process that that's being advocated here. Okay. Yeah. All right, and just a couple of observations. I noticed, uh, and the letter's good, and I particularly like the big duck response about parklands. Um, are we including in our response the issue related to heritage? because the, there is, as I understand from the document, still some risk to already listed properties and appear that they may actually be opened up again. And uh, also the community engagement, which is listed separately, but which doesn't appear as something that we're going to respond to. Um, in terms of the, the heritage matter, I don't believe anything has changed um, in relation to the original Bill that was put before Parliament, so as we haven't reiterated the position on that on that matter, um, it wasn't clear whether it opened up the can of worms. No, 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 it, it is clear. That's our interpretation. It still opens the can of worms. I'm asking, can we emphasise that in our lobby? Through through the chair, we will take that certainly on notice. Um, paragraph 8.8 .8, uh, articulates council's current position. Yep. Um, this particular report refers to the amendments um, being made. So council's previous positions on various aspects of the bill still stand. Uh, in that particular case, if it be the desire of, of council, we would reiterate that point in the communication. Well, I, I, would, like, I would like to emphasise that because I think it's a really significant matter you know, putting things out again for assessment when they've already been listed. So that's been taken on notice. Are you comfortable with that? I am indeed, thank you. And just also, um, the, the, there was uh, no mention of the community engagement as well, the significant trees, and they were all important to us. Thank you. Uh, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, look, I support Councillor Henry's position here. I have a question through to administration, most particularly with regards to attachment A, which were recommendations made by this council on the 8th of October last year. But uh, it's a question just with regards to 8.9, and it's just a practical interpretation in terms of what that means. So 8.9 is remove provisions for the minister having powers to impose council contributions to infrastructure funding. I totally support that position of this council, of course. Um, but practically speaking, Mr Chair or Mr Burton, what, what does that mean? Um, in terms of uh, infrastructure works which a state government may not or may impose upon a council and seek co-funding, what types of projects could that involve? Uh, through the Chair, the discussions that we've had around this subject around infrastructure has been fairly broad. They haven't been definitive in what they may include. They have, however, identified things like um, tram infrastructure, um, schooling, things like that, um, public realm, um, roads uh, and, and the like, sewer, water and gas. Um, in terms of a city-based infrastructure, our conversations have been around, particularly around public transport. Um, in which case, while um, we recommend to Council that um, it not be a compulsory approach, that we would be um, certainly keen and open to discuss um, voluntary discussions around those, given the impact and opportunity that such infrastructure may mean to the economics and growth of the city. So our position is we do not want to be in a... Uh, we do not want to be in a position whereby these matters are imposed upon us, but we may on a case by base, case by case basis consider their relative merits through negotiation. So that's that's what our position is, that's what we're advocating to go. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, any other speakers? Uh, Councillor Hender, we'd like to sum up. Thank you, Chair. Actually, could I just um, just to clarify, it should have another word in there, rights to and otherwise advocates to, comma. That's it. Uh, the, mm, 
that was in my original. So yeah. can I That's fine. Um, we'll see. Um, if I can just um, sum up really quickly, just, just to indicate, you know, these are really complex changes to complex legislation, and uh, they're made even more complex by the fact that we've now got many players who are wanting to make a contribution to it. That for me means that our contribution has to be very articulate, has to be very clear, and we have to be able to really uh, um, demonstrate well, very, uh, very clearly. Um, advocate exactly what our position is, and, and it's unfolding, of course, so that position is going to change as other people's other people's views come into the into the picture. So I just wanted to um, really say how much we appreciate the detailed work that the administration has done on this. Um, I personally, I don't know whether other um, councillors would be interested, but I'd actually really love a briefing on this so I can get my head back around what is really, really complicated stuff at some stage. Um, because I think it's also going to be our job to do some advocacy and just reading the papers, it's really hard to follow who's, a, who's, you know, who's suggesting what and what that means and I've just got a thousand questions about it but, um, but in the meantime we've got something that's a, you know, our clear and already articulated position that we can get back out there to, to the other players. So thanks very much for the work that's done. I you know, see you um, support the motion. Thank you. Members, I'll put that. All those in favour? Have that carried. Item number nine, Councillor Wilkinson. I'm uh, putting this forward with the following amendment in red, if members would like to have a look. Uh, amendment reads that the design, this is about the, um, the curb improvements in front of the British Hotel, which is what the owner of the hotel had sought in a very first instance and then sort of guided down the um, uh, temporary um, uh, uh, platform uh, route. Um, Just read it out, Councillor. So it? it reads that the design not include the bollards, include slate grey um, rather than white concrete flagstones and Two large trees to be planted in adjacent garden beds as a further greening and traffic calming measure. Um, I seek a second and I'll... I seek a second and, and maybe we'll get some clarity on if there's design changes at cost implications of, of that. I think we should get some clarity on, on that just to give everyone information. So this is premised on the option two that um, this... Um, uh, is in a, it's not a corner intersection location where there's an imperative for, for the bollards. Mm -hmm. And I think if we want to encourage outdoor dining in the streets, then we shouldn't be um, making that an easily costly experience by having over engineered bollards on a straight section of road, like, like Finnish Street. I understand on the intersection of Journingham Street or something like that. You can need from a safety point of view, but I think that that just um, makes the exercise needlessly cost prohibitive for the uh, for the business owner um, who has to incur that cost. Um, then um, I think that the staff have done a great job with further enhancing this. I mean, Finnish Street is the, the the most significant building in Finnish Street. So we're really celebrating it by not just doing a curb treatment, but by adding the, the greenery on either side, which I think it really makes something of it. So I commend the staff for the work on that. And um, but um, you know we're looking at doing moving away from the way white concrete pavers that look in the terrain, and I know that they're investigating the grey slate grey flagstone. So I think we should be looking for that new new classier mode of Thing to an exercise such as this, which is going to be the economic time, and then the the, gra the the green areas to either side that just have sort of low level plants. If they had a large tree in each of those, you know that's going to visually narrow the street for traffic coming down and just create shade um, for, for everyone. And um, um, it, um, uh, I'd rather see a large tree functioning as a bollard than a kind of steel bollard. <laughs> kind of something of that, of that order. So um, I hope members can see the merits in those changes. Will it actually reduce the cost of the exercise by um, pulling out the steel bollard component, which I think is really only necessary for the corner location cafes and restaurants, not not mid block situations such as this. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
on residential street. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Um, before I go to the second, a couple of things. First of all, option two doesn't actually include bollards. Well, the intent is that there's not going to be bollards in option two, and that, just to get some clarity on that. And the other question I just want to get clarity on, Mr Chick, is um, David, if um, the, the, can you just give us um, some information on the um, the owner that's um, offered a 50-50 co-funding arrangement, um, the hotel owner, has a, um, is there going to be A, any implications to the budget? What Council Wilkins said it might go down. Um, and B, have they agreed to this? And just so we, we're noting this, now this has got to go to Council for approval, is that correct? Um, th through the Chair, if I could just clarify a couple of things just to reiterate option two, the intent would be that there isn't the use of bollards. Uh, there is reference in the report that there is potential um, that we may have to look at one or two, but we're trying to eliminate through that uh, through the detailed design to actually achieve that because of the garden beds being achieved on either side. In terms of the tree planting, that would be potentially the only additional cost. Um, I'd have to seek um, and that would be fairly minor. I'd have to seek further advice in regards to service location. That is often the issue in regarding to planting trees and why that may not have been shown, which I believe is the case, which we'll further investigate. Through the Chair, we just want to confirm we haven't done that level of due diligence as yet. So it's subject to, but with all intents and purposes, it's possible. Thank you. So in terms of um, the funding arrangement, the idea and the agreements um, um, from the owner of the, the British Hotel is they're very supportive of option um, two. However, given that um, the improvements for what they were seeking to achieve is really only the protuberance in front of the uh, British Hotel, they are still seeking to only fund 50% of that aspect of it with the remainder, including the garden beds, being at the additional cost of, of, of council. Yeah, thank you. Um, Councillor Moran has second. Uh, I'll reserve my right. Deputy Lord Mayor. Just quickly, look, I, speaking to this, I, I'm definitely with Councillor Wilkinson on the uh, on the bollards to be removed. I don't have to, a problem with the trees provided they're not very big, similar to those in Rundle Street. The minute the tree gets a bit bigger, then obviously there's going to be seating capacity taken no, away. No, it's in the garden bed, not the seating area. Okay. Yeah, to either side. Yeah, but I, I get that, but even even in that case, if it's just in the garden bed yeah, that's and right. that's the size of it, yeah. and obviously if they don't grow uh, too big with the electric uh, cabling on top as well, so there's bits, some of the pictures here showing that. I don't know if they're still there or not, but I'm guessing we didn't do a any undergrounding in that area yet. So, uh, yeah, but uh, I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. The only thing is the um, discussion there on the slate grey, if I could just ask a question rather than a white concrete. Was it suggested that it would be a white concrete instead of a slate grey? Is, is, that the, is that what's expected? Through the chair, it's just in keeping with the rest of the street. The current. So the, in, the rest of the street is a, uh, is a white concrete flex, is that what it is? The, the, the footpath, the white, the white concrete flagstones, as is most of North Adelaide. Oh yeah, yeah, I get that. So, but what I'm trying to work out is, is that is the motion going to make it um, different than the rest of the footpath, or is it going to make it the same? It's going to make it different. Okay, that, that's the only part that I'm unsure about. That's all. Um, so you'll, you'll, you'll have to listen to the debate. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. So, the, so the only part of that street, um, this would be the only should. part of the street that's different. Is that correct? Is that the right assumption that I'm making? Or am I wrong? Or? Oh, through the chair, yes, that's my understanding. So it would be purely in front of the Venice Hotel, it would be different than the rest of the street? Correct. Okay. Well, that's, that's the only part that I'm questioning. All right, so I've got Councillor Bishaw, Councillor Hender, Councillor Moran that want to speak. And the Lord Mayor and Councillor Martin. <coughs> the topic uh, through the Chair. I, I, I think you've clarified it. It's just, uh, it was a little bit confusing to me as to which option we were going with. So so the cost is 140000 for option two, of which British Hotel Sport is going to contribute 25 to 30, and we've already got 120 in budget. Um, so... Could we, could we, I don't know if I can do that, can we just amend that so it's really clear that we're talking about option two and 
that they are contributing 50% of the original costing. Can you scroll that down? Can you scroll that down? It doesn't say option two. Well, so can we just say council notes the plan streetscape enhancement on Finna Street brackets option two? Can we do that? Yep. Option two. And in, um, in and number three, yeah. if we could say, based on the co-funding arrangement of option one. Now, I'm going to ask if the mover and seconder are happy with this yeah. as a variation to get the clarity. Is that a yes from the mover? Is that a yes from the seconder? I'm happy and I also suggest that in that case we take out the uh, bollards. Correct. Option yeah, in not uh, part four as it's already in option two. Correct. So hang on. Yeah. Option one is... Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Let, let. Okay. So, um, you're the seconder, Councillor Moran. So, no, I'm just uh, suggesting that we do that. I'm not moving or include our last but As, as so the mover, sure. now that I understand that the option two doesn't include the bollards, right. but I was confused yes. with the drawings why option one had bollards and option two had bollards. That's why I just want to make sure there were no bollards because there is. Okay. Are you amending? Are you changing your yes, I'm having motion? Yes, i those changes. So, just so that the design includes yeah. slate grey rather than white grey. Yes. Now, can we can we can just a quick question? Can we continue yes. as a noting, given that's a minor variation to the, or does it still still have got has to go to council and still still have to go to council? Okay. Just. Um, Chair, sure, can I ask a question? No. <laughs> Okay, so this change in part four, we will send this item to council. It's okay, so be it. Are you happy with that word, wording, Council Wilkinson? That the design includes slate grey. Council Moran is the seconder. Do I need to see leave for variation on that? Okay, members, I'll just uh, seat leave for vary. All those in favour? Declare that carried. Anyone against? Well, I think it's wrong. Well, you can vote it. You can vote against it. This is just to this is to vary. What well, Council Walker has just varied his motion. So I was just seeking leave to from members for that variation. Now, Councillor Vishore, you were have you finished? Thank you. Councillor Hender. Thank you, Chair. Um, we've got an Adelaide design manual that gives us an indication of what pavers should be used in what circumstances. Can you, could I ask for a comment on, from administration about what the design manual calls for in this location? Thank you, Chair. Um, through the LA design manual, the concrete uh, flags and curbing were selected because they're consistent with the rest of the street. Um, so changing the colour would be a variation to the rest of the street and it would just be outside the front of... But is it, what, what does the design manual say? It will say to continue the light grey pavers that um, are throughout the rest of the street. Okay, thank you. And is there a cost implication for having slate grey rather than the light grey? Or is it just a different colour of cement? Uh, through the chair... We're still going through that process of understanding the cost of the slate grey paving, so we don't, I can't give you a definitive answer on that. And my next question is, um, uh, has anyone had any discussions with the owners of the building who are the proponents of this whole deal about the colour of the um, pavers outside their premises? Through the chair, not specifically, but um, throughout the design they've been involved and they're strongly supportive of option two which includes the consistent footpath treatment along the street. Look, I, I don't think I can support what is, you know, I, I just don't think this is a place for design. Um, we've got a design manual, we've got a team who goes out and communicates with the with the people who are the proponents who have indicated that they're happy with it. I, I mean, I, I don't have a big deal about it being slate grey rather than, than light grey, but we've got a design manual, we've got a process for how this should be negotiated and I don't understand why at this stage we we um, come in with our own views. I mean, I might like a pink, but I don't know if that's what this... It's not our job to do that. We're trying to apply... Are you, are you reading an amendment? ..a consistent... No, I'm just simply not going to vote. vote. Sorry, what was... Was this an amendment or was this a... 
Because mm -hmm. the milk has been moved it from the floor. You might want to hear my summing up before you decide I wish to. Yeah, okay, so I, look, I think I'm unlikely to have supported it, let's put it that way, and if needs be, I'd um, uh, just uh, foreshadow that I'd. Uh, if, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't get up, I'll foreshadow that I'd just uh, move the original motion. Um, again, the true, true trees, I, I suspect that we be designed in if. They're possible to design in, but I don't think we can say in this room that you're going to plant trees there where we haven't had circumstances, we haven't done the due diligence about whether you can actually put trees in that location given what's underground and what's in the air. Um, and so we're doing in this room what actually should be an administrative task in my view. Councillor Moran? No, we're not doing in this room what should be an administrative task. This is a notes and suggestions. If the staff come back and say that trees can't be planted, which would gobsmack me that you can't plant a tree, uh, we don't plant a tree. So we're here, okay. Councillor Hender, to um, direct what we would like. Happy with and I'm, I'm kind of sick of the always when Councillor Wilkinson, who is a town planner, says things that we nitpick it to bits. The planning, planning manual. This just to clarify, Councilman, if this goes through, this is they'll have, this decision will be final, and it will have to come back to council if, for example, those two trees couldn't be planted. Exactly. It'll we'll have to come so back. Have to, can I just? No, no. Councilman has the floor right now. Councilman Shaw, can you turn off your mic? Come on, let's. This is a simple conversation. Councilman, who has suggested that we use the dark pavers? For a long time. Now, it's not like you suggesting pink papers. Sandy has had a lot of support for the dark slate grey papers, which has been basically ignored at every stage for years and years and years. Um, the design manual doesn't say put white ones down. It says, where possible, continue like for like. Um, so it is incorrect to say that it states that. The pavers in this street are old cement pavers, grey pavers. They're not the stark white, white ones that we've just um, laid down Molesworth Street, which I, I haven't quite got Sandy's love of the dark or the white. I don't really care. But it annoys me when um, he is constantly scuttled like this. The white ones will look even more different to the old grey ones than dark ones. So it really doesn't matter. They are going to... They, that is going to look like a different colour paper outside that hotel because these are very old grey flagstones that have aged into a light slate grey. So a darker slate grey is not going to look much, it's going to probably blend in better than the very, very white ones that we're laying now. Uh, and to, to say that you can't vote for it because there might be facilities and God forbid it hits a... It hits a uh, a uh, stoby pole or impinges on this man's right to this man's um, thing. They're that, that, that ridiculous arguments. Plant some trees, put some. What if, if a councillor really considers that, that is a better option and the other councillors really don't care either way, why do we constantly do this to ourselves? Sandy's a good town planner and a good architect. He thinks that would look nicer. Well, and he also is a North Adelaide based. Um, business without it. Why can't you vote for it? I know you won't, but why can't you just once in this new term vote for something that he says? He's been banging on about these papers for a long time. I like you, don't care, but because he cares, I will vote for it. Thank you. Right, members, we're debating some <laughs> papers here. Let's stick to the um, argument. Uh, Lord Mayor. Thanks, Chair. Um, uh, option two to me seems sensible. I just like some assurances, of course, from the administration that option two, of course, complies and safe in terms of uh, so forth, which I presume that it is. So I'm getting the nod on that. Thank you. Um, sorry, Alex, I've just stolen your thunder. Um, and I just some clarity from Councillor Wilkinson. When we are talking about uh, slate pavers, are we talking about the entirety of the space from the building front to the curb, or are you just talking about the protuberance? The through the chair and I'll answer that question. The proposal is in two is to have a uniform paving from the building alignment to the curb. Councillor Moran, can you tell us? So, that, so um, that is my intention that, that that design intent is put forward by the design team being maintained. We've had instances in Tint Street where a different paving, the stark white thing, has been put on the curb protuberance and the interlocking uh, red paving has been left and it looks very odd. And and it's also setting the setting the scene for 
the ugly white concrete pavers rather than actually moving to a slate grey. Then the rest of the street hasn't been done, so we've got the opportunity to get the footpath right in, in Philly Street with this, because what happens here will then dictate what happens to the rest of the street. Thank you, Council. I have a question through an administration. Administration, your professional opinion, would slate complement or compete? Through the Chair, uh, we'll take your direction, we'll do it, quite frankly. Um, look, I support the Councillor here, but I'd have a caveat. I'd, I'd want to know a cost, and I wouldn't want to make a decision without the reference of the cost, and I'd also, of course, want to know whether the uh, licensee or the owner of the hotel actually supports this motion, which I think is critical. So I would have two caveat points <coughs> to provide my support to the Council. Are you amending that? Um, subject to? Um, we can perhaps take that on notice. Yes, that's Mr. Chair. Please do help. Um, yeah. <laughs> through the chair, what I what I would suggest is, given that uh, given the nature of current um, recommendations as they stand, that they will need to come to council. That in the week in between, we can provide some additional information in terms of of cost. Also, one of the reasons why it has been recommended to continue the light grey paving is particularly in regards to the continuous footpaths over the driveway. So there's clear delineation of traffic movement in those locations and giving priority to pedestrians. We'll provide that information to, to Council in order to make their final determination. Thank you, Mr. Chick. So, in closing, members, I'd actually encourage you to support Councillor. You've got the you've got the ability once you know the cost, once you know whether the hotel owner provides the support, and you've got that third matter regarding the trees. Uh, that can be brought before you in council, and you can vote accordingly once you have that information. But in the first instance, I'd say I'd support the council. Councillor Martin. Um, yeah, look, I'm agnostic on white and grey, but I, I will accept the advice of the councillor. It, it, uh, it's a grand building and anything that can be done to enhance its appearance is important. I take the point about trees and particularly the potential for interference with power lines overhead. And perhaps I could foreshadow an amendment for the undergrounding of the power lines in Pinner Street. But, and my residency there has nothing to do with that proposal. But, um, uh, look, You'll I, be happy to make your contribution. <laughs> <laughs> for the small space in the front of my place, I was, yeah. Uh, look, this is a, a worthwhile project. I'm conscious that it had its origins in the work of Councillor Moran and Wilkinson, it actually began as a parklet, which would have been a, a most appalling result for Finnis Street and indeed for that building, to see the design as it is now with the enhancement that's proposed is sensational. It will not only improve the appearance of Finnis Street, but uh, if it acts as a calming device for the traffic, that will be great too, because vehicles do speed down there and I note that one was clocked at 90 kilometres an hour and, and I hasten to add it wasn't me although I have a good idea who it might have been but um, the uh, the traffic speeds in that street are uh, way beyond what is appropriate so anything that calms uh, traffic flow is a great idea so I'll endorse the amendment and I welcome the project that's been before us it's great Thank you, Councillor Cobell. Thank you. Um, yes, I am definitely um, like the removal of the bollards and going with option two. Um, just on the pavers, like looking at the pictures here, there seems to be already quite a mismatch of colours and I, I personally don't think that having um, white versus grey is really going to make all that much of a difference and if Councillor Wilkinson is really wanting this then I'm happy to support that. That's not a big thing for me. Um, I'm really, really pleased to see the inclusion of large trees in the rain gardens. Um, you know, rain gardens in itself, just to have the rain garden there is fantastic, which is also part of option too. These um, help to, like they collect in shallow ponds rainwater and stormwater and then it naturally filters through and then goes out into our drainage systems filtering out nasty chemicals and pollutants and to have that in this design is fantastic I think it's a model of best practice and I want to see them unveiled throughout other parts of the city as often as much as we can and it makes sense to include trees there as well great excellent debate uh, Councillor Wilkinson would like to sum up thank you chair 
Um, yes, I hope members do support this amendment. I sort of give them some thought and consideration to how this. It's not an amendment, it's your motion. This motion, as with those amendments of mine. Um, the, um, uh, you know, this has the potential to really do a lot for um, Peter Street, and um, the paving that is in the street is the old. It's the old paving that's due to be renewed, and I'd like to see that all, you know, renewed with the slate flags. And Adelaide, one of the materials that is unique to Adelaide is slate. We have slate flagstones out the front of this town hall. Um, so a slate grey flagstone is a very Adelaide uh, um, colour, and I think we should be looking with our design mandate. And I know that our staff are already looking into this. Um, and David Chick and others have said to me it looks classier. I know the owner of the hotel, I know that he would prefer a slate grey than a, than a cheap looking white concrete. I previously advised, been advised by staff that the cost of adding the pigment to the concrete is a cost in cost in the order of 5%, so negligible in the scheme of things. Um, and um, uh, the, the trees that just seem to be a, a, a lost opportunity, you know, you're trying to sort of thinking about calming the traffic and you've got trees in the middle of the street growing over the street that, that um, just closes down the street and, and helps make it a lower speed sort of um, sense of environment and, and more beautiful for everyone and provide shade um, for the uh, patrons and, and I commend the staff the way that they've made this not just a curb protuberance but actually something that will be a centrepiece to, um, to, to fill the street. Thank you, members. I've put that. All those in favour? Anyone against? Got that carried. Um, item on 10, out of session papers to note. Lord Mayor, you're pulling this out. Chair, thank you. I'm going to be fairly quick. Uh, this Are is just a, I am. Look, I am moving to receive a note. Yes, I am. Last seconder, please. Yes, look, Lord Thank you. So I'll be quick, Chair. I just want to be very clear as to precisely what we are moving here. Um, we have the 60 residents and stakeholders in the area who have been consulted, of which 45% are kind of living in the status quo. Are you, are you talking about um, attachment oh, sorry, two? Sorry, I am talking about attachment two. I apologise, Chair, because there are three items in 10, so yes, two. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a question to administration, just for the sake, uh, sake of clarity, is that uh, are we looking through this consultation process to examine other options, or are we looking to get further intel on the four options which are being provided. That's my only question. Through the chair, so the purpose of the consultation was to um, discuss the options of time closures in Ebenezer Place. Uh, what we've found through that consultation is that the responses were conclusive, there wasn't um, a significant swing one way or another and a certain amount of tension between residents and um, businesses. So Angela, this just simply enables you to do a deeper dive into this matter so you can bring it back to us for more information. Is that...? Uh, through the Chair, no, the consultation has been completed. It was sent to 380 residents, um, traders and businesses. And this, is the, this report is the results of that consultation. Yeah. Okay. It's purely noting the results of the consultation. Okay. Just in relation to that, I know you said it's sort of inconclusive but there were in option two option three and option four um most support some some type of closure they're just not all gathered in that category so in category in option two um, a regular time closure of thursday to sunday uh, option three supports a time closure of other times and then option four supports a permanent road closure so all these three options if you were add them up uh, there would be probably about 33 of them that support some type of closure but not quite at the same time, etc. So is there potentially something to explore there to look at how we could, you know, get some of that resolved or through the chair. If council directs us to do that, we can oh, definitely okay. do that. Right. The um, the resolution of council was to explore time closures and what we found through this was that only sixteen respondents supported some type, some sort of time closure. The others looked at either a complete closure or no closure at all. Okay. Yeah. So to just give the, the clarity, this is the, what, noting the consultation and basically nothing's going to change because you're saying the consultation is showing that 27 of those that responded didn't support. So it's going to be left at that. So 
for any any change, you need to I think bring it back to council during a with a, on a motion um, without notice or on notice if anyone wants to change that. And I note that Councillor Slammer isn't here, so someone might like to have a chat with him. Uh, Lord Mayor, would you like to sum up? Oh, oh Councillor Corbell. With... Thank you. Yes, I just um, I just wanted to say to the administration on point one, um, like attachment one, the $1 million greening streets, well done. And it seems to me like it's really great bang for buck there with all of the projects that we're investing in. And um, on seven, um, the River Torrens water quality, there's reference in there of um, electro-targeted fishing. And I'm just interested if there can be more information provided on what that involves. Uh, th through the chair, we'll take that on notice. That's been information that's been provided by Juna, uh, so we can provide some additional information to members okay. in regards to what that means. Yeah, I've got another question about the um, sodium per carbonate as well, so I'll follow that up later. Summed up, Lord Mayor. Summed up, Chair. Thanks. I'll put that. All those in favour? Let's go back, Harry. Thank you. Members, uh, under other business, we have a motion on notice from Councillor Hender. I'll uh, call for a seconder on that. Councillor Bashaw. Councillor Hendon, you have the floor. Councillor Zebulon, may you turn your mic off? Thanks. Thanks, um, thanks Chair. Look, this um, motion came about as a, as a consequence of um, some comments that we had in late last year from um, some of the organisers of events who said that the, um, the cost on their red tape associated with temporary road closures were actually a disincentive for them doing stuff in our city. Um, and so um, so I've moved this motion and we have got a short response, but I am still looking for a, 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 a proper report on this issue. Um, and I'm looking particularly at, um, or, uh, or and, I, and I thank the administration for the work they've already done, but what I'm actually after is, um, is something that gives us a, a real way forward to make this process simpler and cheaper. I think there is an opportunity when we've got a state that's state government that's interested in um, city vibrancy, appointing a minister for the city today, as I understand it, um, that to even talk about um, potential changes to legislation. Um, if so, that the report that we've got so far notes that there's legislation that precludes things from happening, or says that we have to go down certain paths in order to get things to happen. Well, let's go back to the state if we can and say. How about we change the legislation to make that easier for people? And I'd also like the report to have a um, to have a look at how we might um, simplify the process, for example, by installing simple uh, in on-site in, in um, infrastructure that can be used um, easily. And uh, some simple things are gates that fold back against buildings but can be pulled out when you want to close a road, or pop-up bollards that don't cost too much or don't go to too much effort, so that we can make the actual physical process of closing the road and the extent to which that road closure then has to be managed by human beings, um, we can make that as easy as we possibly can. The idea being that the more we can do to get out of the way of people who want to do stuff on our city streets, um, the better um, our city is going to be. So I just urge members um, to uh, support this motion, which is simply asking for a report so that we can have a look at what things we can do to make this easier. Thank you. Councillor Vashaw, do you have um, Thank you, Chair. The only thing I would add to that is that um, the, the greater cost is in the traffic management, which is what Councillor Hand is referring to, um, which of course can uh, be a, a huge amount for a small event in terms of the cost of keeping that road closed uh, for a period of time. Um, uh, there, I know the administration has looked at various ways working with groups such as people in Ebenezer Place to actually train um, people from the associations to put bollards in and out. And it's just a matter of also having a look at what are the streets that are perhaps closed most often so that there's a priority uh, if we can't do all of that. Thank you. Um, the CEO has just got a comment to make. Yeah, through you, Chair. Um, I realise this is an issue across local government in South Australia. All councils struggle with this particular topic because it is um, really unfortunate the cost and the effort that you need to go to to close a road. So uh, along with 
uh, investigating our own local solutions. I think the LGA should be asked to investigate and report on opportunities for legislative change and in working as a sector to solve this problem because it is replicated throughout all the councils in the state. It is a crazy situation at the moment. We, I just made a joke. We want to be first and have more events in, our, in the city. <laughs> Don't leave them, please. <laughs> um, that was a joke. Uh, uh, Councillor Henry, would you like to sum up? Sum up. Put that. All those in favour? Okay, that carried. Members, do I have any other business? Lord Mayor? I do, Chair. I, I don't specifically want to move a motion, Chair, but I would like to make a comment, if I may. No. No? Move a motion or question. You can ask a question, Lord Mayor. Uh, can you do it in about... I'll ask a rhetorical minutes? question, if I can, in about 30 seconds, You'll Chair. You'll answer, yeah. I, uh, Members, we heard, and I'm just picking up on Councillor Henders comment with regarding uh, the State Government announcing that we have a uh, Minister for the City of Adelaide, which I think we generally welcome. We haven't had a Minister for the City of Adelaide since the days of Jane Lomax Smith, I understand. And your question is? My, my rhetorical question is to the members uh, that um, I have telephoned the Deputy Premier today and just offered congratulations on behalf of Council, but shared that uh, in future, as a consequence of the very hard work that we've done over 2015 to foster strong working relationship with the government, that we feel that, it, well, I felt, uh, that it would be appropriate that um, we don't hear about these types of announcements left of field. And that some prior warning, because we do go, Chair, to great lengths to advise the government when we are doing something in advance, and I think that should be reciprocated. So my question is, members, do you support that telephone call today? There is a question in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, my yeah. is well, do not well hang, uh, Councillor yeah. Ryan, hang on. You, can, you, can't ask, you can't ask the Chamber a question on that. You have to ask the administration I, a question. I, I, the process. I, I, but let's just, uh, let's just take this as... Um, you can, you can ask it around the dinner table, I would suggest. Could the CEO take my rhetorical question um, on board? Thank you, CEO. That's actually a question. Well done. <laughs> there was um, one in there somewhere, I promise. To no followers. All right, members, I've got to get the next committee meeting started, so I'll close the meeting. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, CEO. <laughs> Very uh, free and easy going chair tonight. <laughs> I don't think any. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.
The Infrastructure and Public Space Committee acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present who recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. Apologies in these absence. Councillor Clareham, Councillor Slum. Confirmation of minutes. Have a moment. The minutes. Lord Mayor, second Councillor Martin. All those in favour? All those opposed? Carry. Public forum. We have the nil. Chair's verbal report. Um, welcome back for the new year of Council 2016, everybody. I hope you've all had a uh, restful uh, Christmas and New Year's break. Um, selection appointment of Deputy Chair. The CEO will call for nominations for the appointment of the Deputy Chair for the Infrastructure and Public Space Committee for the period 21st of January 2016 to 20th of January 2017. Pass to the CEO. Call for nominations. Okay. Councilor uh, so I call for nominations? Yeah, yeah. Councillor Antic. Councillor Antic. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <ask> you. <laughs> he, he was he was your current. Yeah, he was. He used to count. He used to left the building. He still. <laughs> can, can well, I nominate? He needs to be here. So. We'll start by nom I'll nominate him. Okay. 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 Well, perhaps um, see if there are any other nominations for that position. He's, the He's on the phone. He says, "I'll accept the nomination." <laughs> <laughs> Could we um, adjourn that question until he does? Is okay, I'll put that. I'll bring that done. item to the end of the agenda and we'll revisit it. Hopefully, when uh, Councillor Andy goes back. Items for adoption of block seven. <laughs> Item eight: Parklands <laughs> leasing and licensing policy. Councillor Martin. That's it. That is the one. Okay. So, Councillor Martin, Parklands Leasing and Licensing Policy. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, I actually want to propose some amendments um, to the uh, the document before us. Um, so, is it possible for me to move the amendments straight away? It's not, is it? It is. Oh, okay. Aren't we just still doing a call over? No, that was it. No, it was your motion as amended with the amendments you read. Yeah, I move it as printed with the amendments. Yes. So I seek a seconder. Councillor Moran, a second. Councillor Martin, speak to your motion, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, look, we uh, deferred this matter so that uh, we could examine this document in the context of the parkland strategy, which is still under consultation, the parkland fee document, which is included in part here, uh, the new state liquor licensing policy, which is still being developed, the new, uh, uh, to allow APLA to look over it, and because of uh, an administrative error at, at the, uh, the meeting it was last uh, discussed at. Um, can I begin by saying that this is a prospective document, not retrospective, and so are the amendments that I'm proposing. Uh, nevertheless, what we're doing here is uh, finally considering the policy and the guidelines concerning uh, the operation of about 20% of the, uh, the parklands of, uh, of Adelaide, and this supersedes all other uh, documents and policies. Now this one is significant because it includes some changes to the, uh, the fees charged. There's a decrease in the rental discount and license fees for educational institutions. There's an increase in the base rate per square metre lease uh, fees for buildings. There's provision for automatic CPI increases as recommended uh, by the consultants engaged by council, Savills. Um, with discounts for license holders who uh, maintain the parklands. But um, most importantly, and I want to thank the administration for this, um, 
this document allows us to adopt an open and transparent process for leases and licenses in the parklands where there will now be a call for expressions of interest in the parklands and in buildings against criteria to evaluate the worth of each and every proposal that comes before us. It is an open and transparent process. Six months before a lease or a license uh, uh, expires, expressions of interest will be called for in advertisements and the proposed amendment at 17.2, I'm proposing also ensures that our selection criteria and our weightings will be made public and add just another layer of transparency to the whole process. The amendment I'm suggesting at 13.1 seeks to ensure that the same process, the same open process with the weighting and uh, uh, the criteria being known as well, applies to vacant land rather than uh, just land that's been previously leased or licensed. Unsolicited bids for parklands aren't dealt with here because uh, Council at this time still does not have a policy for dealing with unsolicited bids. And I'd ask the administration in the consideration of that policy, which is going on now, whether we could specifically consider unsolicited bids for parklands, because people have high expectations that we will have high standards for those areas. Now, we also have in this document clear definitions for the first time of uh, maximum length of leases. Um, uh, 10 years for commercial, 10 years for educational, 5 years plus 4 for community groups and longer leases in cases which are discussed, negotiated and uh, most often brought before council. Now I commend to you also the administration's suggestion that we can exercise a much more nuanced approach to the management of the parklands by agreeing to a policy amendment at 6.10 on page 21 to, uh, and I quote, ensure the permitted use of any lease or license is cognizant of all adjacent land uses, commensurate with council strategies and policies, and is determined on a case-by-case -case basis. This hands to the administration the capacity to deal with unique circumstances, to treat every case as a separate case. Now, the final uh, amendment I want to talk about is at page 38 of the guidelines, and this one concerns signage on parklands. Um, I'm happy if you've read the documents with 12.2, that's good, but 12.1 would allow product advertising in the parklands so that could, potentially you could get uh, signs, even neon signs, for somebody's crash repairs or finger licking good chicken or whatever. Um, now, changing that, taking out 12.1, uh, is a step towards ensuring that doesn't happen, but it doesn't rule it out. It just means that if somebody wants advertising signage in the parklands, then they've got to lodge a development application and then it gets a, a level of scrutiny. Now, I'm really pleased about the document. I commend the amendments to you. Uh, and I thank um, Mr. Burton, wherever he is, for his assistance in uh, all of this. I want to emphasize that none of this is about stopping high quality developments in the parklands. This is actually about providing an even playing field, providing open and transparent dealings, so that there can still be SACA proposals and other large development proposals for the parklands, but there is now a clear, understandable policy, an open policy in place that will give the administration the policy tools to deal with each and every application. And at the same time, uh, I think the selection criteria and the way we go about it will enable the administration to garner the best possible expressions of interest and encourage people in the process of lodging expressions of interest to go a step further than just with a simple application uh, and maybe uh, to offer something for the parklands that is not offered at the moment. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Move to the second, Councillor Moran. No, I was in Moran. Councillor Hender and Councillor Milani. Thank you. Um, um, I want to start just by thanking 
thanking Councillor Martin for the careful work he's done in this area and, and really for, I think, changing the way we all think a bit about how the park lands ought to be handled and managed. And, um, but I have got a couple of questions just so I understand. I, I think I'm happy to support it, but I just wanted to get a, a couple of questions. Um, one relates to the removal of the words or other competitive process. I just don't understand the rationale for that. Um, and the second one relates to the removing of 12.1 and the consequence of that because it appears to me that it takes away the necessity to get development approval rather than, and so weakens rather than strengthens our position. So. Well, look, um, yeah, if, uh, let me deal with the first one. Yeah. Uh, in respect of other competitive process, that clause relates specifically to vacant parklands. And so by after the words expressions of interest, including in brackets or other competitive process, means that it is subject to different rules to land which is already leased. Yeah. And so by removing other competitive process, the words, then we actually make it an even playing field, or all are the same. Um, in respect of the 12.1, um, um, I'll defer to the administration on that, but my understanding is that in fact um, the, uh, the circumstances are that advertising would still be permitted, but it would require a, um, a, a it would raise the bar. Uh, through you, Chair. Uh, yes, the deletion of that uh, clause doesn't uh, really change anything in regards to the legislative requirements to work through the development plan for any signage. So uh, the policy here doesn't really add any strength to um, endorsing the signage in the park. And, and supplementary question, if I may, just in relation to signage, it's not going to prevent anybody from telling me that I can go and get an ice cream over at that um, kiosk over there or something that's going to draw my, my attention to things that are going to be helpful for me as a user of the parkland. Okay. On that basis, and thank you very much for the answers, I'm very happy to support these amendments. Councillor Mulani. A question please, Chair. Um, I've got a problem with most of the amendments, but about 12.1, um, for those events, for example, or those, um, because it's not really about events, this is more about the, um, infra the infrastructure, but it doesn't, it doesn't stop them from having like a sponsored signage. Let's say you've got, you know, it's sponsored by a, you know, Hilton Hotel. Or whatever. Does that prohibit them from having anything like that? Uh, yeah, through you, Chair. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, this uh, the temporary signage, what, what we call temporary signage for event days, uh, where they're holding a game on the weekend and they're sponsored by a certain company. They can actually put those signs up as a as a temporary temporary display for the period of the event. So that's not covered under this um, this policy. Councillor Vashaw, the little man. Um, I guess I, again on 12.1, um, and um, thanks Phil, because you've been through it with a fine tooth comb, which is great. Um, given that the sign is you're subject to getting the development approval anyway, I'm not sure what advantage it is in deleting that clause. Councillor Martin, to reply. Um, look, my understanding is that as it stands, the policy would uh, allow signage depicting products sold by the lessee. So, for example, you could have um, a circumstance in which um, a lessee could aspire to have each and every ice cream cone that's sold on, on a premise building. Um, all I'm seeking to do is to tighten that up in terms of the policy guidelines so that signage related to the location is still fine, but a separate application would be required in terms of uh, sponsorship, not concerning events. Events are separate. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So I just so, sorry. Yeah, I just thought that that's basically how that covers off anyway. So. Yeah, I guess uh, Councillor was sure. I think twelve point one was basically stating the fact that uh, yeah, that the Development Act would apply in that circumstance. Um, 
I, I guess it's a, it's it's a, it's merely a fact that it could could be included in the policy or couldn't be. I think it was just a personal preference. Through you, I, I support what Councillor Martin uh, we had a chat about earlier. So I do understand it's trying to stop, you know, supported by Joe Blogs, whatever, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, so that all of the club rooms become, um, you know, signage billboards. Um, so I'm just not sure whether. Um, administration can have a look at the wording in that clause so that we uh, to, to make that clause respond to what the council is trying to achieve. I think Anne's got it. Make it a bit more positive. Yeah. Right? Perhaps we should enunciate what we want rather than removing. Yes. Well, what I was seeking to do was to have a time on that so that it became the subject of a separate process. But Perhaps we should say that. Yeah. Yeah. So signage depicting products sold by the lessee and or signage depicting organisations that sponsorship uh, provide sponsorship to the lessee or licensee will not, not usually be approved or is that what you're suggesting? Or will only be approved um, in circumstances of a, um, an application through development approvals? Yeah. I don't yeah. think we should say that it should, won't be approved very often, but it say how it has to, the process that it has to go through. I guess what I was getting at was that that creates the expectation. If I could just provide some guidance um, from the chair, from my planning, planning hat on, the, the, what uh, an approval authority may or may not approve an appropriate or inappropriate signage, but the council as the landlord and basically say it doesn't want its buildings plastered with signs and say that. So it's, it's beside the point whether the Development Assessment Commission would approve a billboard, you know, there. We don't want a billboard there saying Coca-Cola, so we can just say it in our policy to, um, uh, to, uh, to enunciate what we want. So there might, I think, might be an opportunity to be more clear about rather than relying on the deference to the development plan process. Well, is, uh, is someone proposing an amendment? Yeah. We could think about it till council. Yes. Look, if it's approved and there's a better idea if it emerges before next Tuesday, I'm happy to take it on. Yeah. Um, it's been suggested to me um, that um, we continue dealing with this as it is now and between now and, and, and um, full council um, there'll be an opportunity for the, um, the, uh, the mover and anyone else for that matter to um, uh, come up with a more definitive um, words to uh, define that issue. Um, now the Lord Mayor next doesn't speak. Thanks Chair. Um, I support Councillor Martin on this. I think it's uh, well researched. Well intended. Um, uh, it doesn't preclude us from uh, uh, supporting quality refurbishments and upgrades and even development on the parklands. It just puts in a greater level of checks and balances in doing so. Um, I have met with Councillor, I have looked into this quite deeply, and I support the, uh, uh, the proposed amendments here uh, and uh, look forward for this going through to Council. Do you have any further comments? Go back to uh, Summed up. All those in favour? All those opposed? That's carried. Uh, now, at this item on the agenda, now that Councillor Anton is back in the room, we'll come back to item six. <laughs> up on our way, Councillor Antic. Uh, selection of appointment chair. Uh, Councillor Antic, um, do we have any uh, nominations? You're the current chair. I know. He's never away. What was that? Melbourne Cup that? Oh, right. Alright, fine. Yeah, sorry. I informed that Councillor Malani was going to cop the gun and has nominated as I've been out to the item. So, Councillor Malani has no case. And would you accept it? Yes. Gracious applause, yes. Do we have any other nominations? Councillor Hendrick. Okay, in the, in the absence of any other nominations, um, I put that as a fail. Opposed? Seconded. 
Item 10, out of session papers for committee to receive a note, there are nil. Other business? <coughs> There's nil. Item seeking exclusion of public. We have item 13, Hindley Street. About the paving in Hindley Street. Um, item 14, uh, that Lambert's boat shed lease arrangement. I put the exclusion motion for item. Yeah, I'll move that in, Jim. For the exclusion. For exclusion. Motion. Yep. yep. Um, those in favour of that? Seconded. That's Milani. All those in favour? Those okay, thank you. And again for item 14, Lambert's boat shed lease arrangement. <coughs> moved by the Deputy Lord Mayor, second by Hender, all those in favour of exclusion motion, as opposed. So if both of those items would be dealt with in conflict, so I ask all those members of the public and staff in relation to this, these items.
coming back here and I um, realize this meeting is now closed at 7.30. Order. I'd like to move us. We were planning to have a, a Central Market Arcade discussion.